G'day Internet. So just yesterday I was out at the local recycling uh, centre just poking around and I picked up this Macintosh LC before it got turned into landfill. Um, it's in pretty rough condition, um, but I've always wanted an LC. My aunt had one uh, donkey's years ago when I was uh, actually lived with her. I actually lived with my aunt for about six months uh, when I was about 16. Uh, and I've always wanted to kind of add one to the collection. I've got various other Macs, um, but I didn't have an LC. This one is though pretty rough. So uh, without further ado, let's roll the intro and see what we're dealing with. So straight away you can see this, I, I'm not even sure if I would call this Mac yellow, I'm going more with brown uh, and certain bits of black. Um, and it's not complete here, as you can see, there's no mouse uh, and there's also um, no cable, there's no ADB cable. Uh, so that's going to have to get replaced, Let's put that to one side. Um, other than that, uh, I've got no idea about the hard drive, I've got no idea about the floppy drive, uh, and I don't even know it's, if it's going to power on. So, um, let's try that first. Righto, let's start by turning the monitor on. Well, we have a light. Turn the computer on. We have nothing. Righto, time for the cover to come off and see what we're dealing with. Now the covers on these are super easy to take off. There's a screw which has already been removed, well it's missing, uh, and two clips. The whole cover comes off. So now with the cover off, let's hit the power button again and see what happens. Ooh. Okay, we have a ticking noise. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. All right, see if you can hear this. That seems to be coming from the speaker. Now, given the experience I do have with old Macs, I think the first thing I'm gonna start with is swapping out the uh, PRAM battery. So let's start with that. So preemptively, I uh, already got myself a new battery. So this little cover should come off and the old battery should come out. And we put the new battery in and the cover back on. Right, let's try it again. Same thing, right. Okay, next step. So the next thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try a replacement power supply, I think, which I have a spare here. So we'll unplug the mains, disconnect the lead from the power supply. Now the power supply is actually just held in by two clips. It lifts up from the back and out it comes. And the installation is just simply the reverse. Slot it in, push it down, clip it in, and plug it back in. So we will now plug the mains back in and hit the power. Ooh, we have a startup beep. There's a start. All right, let me reconnect the monitor uh, and see what we get. All right, we've got the monitor plugged back in. Uh, let's hit the power and see what it does. I also have a startup disk in there this time. Screen's warming up. Ooh, okay, that's not good. Uh, it's all distorted and a weird line through the middle. And that doesn't look like adjustment issues. Certainly to me, it doesn't look like anything that's simply vertical height or vertical hold. Or if it's vertical hold, it's completely let go through a dead capacitor or something. So, um, what am I gonna do about this? Ooh, I know, I'm gonna cheat. Hang on a minute.
and there we go we have a working monitor now I can't actually do anything here at the moment because I don't have a keyboard cable and I don't have a mouse but we are getting somewhere so it turns out I actually do have an ADB cable so let's plug in this absolutely putrid keyboard and see how we go dun, 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 dun. which way around that way okay I'm gonna have to clean my hands after doing this right can I tab well I'm gonna need a mouse to get any further to see if we actually have a working hard drive or not so let me find a mouse and we'll go from there so what you just watched was actually recorded about three weeks ago because things didn't quite go to plan um, I did find a mouse that was something um, however in the process of doing further work on the machine uh, the monitor started playing up pretty badly it started getting really really blurry after about 20 minutes use or thereabouts so I did a bit of research asked around and everyone just went look it's early 90s computer gear it will be capacitors um, and I thought about it and I thought about well do I just simply just work out which exact capacitors are affecting the blurriness or do I just simply recap the entire monitor um, and I thought for safety's sake let's just simply recap it now I didn't record me doing that for a couple of reasons one um, my desoldering gun here at home actually died uh, so I ended up doing the whole job uh, at work uh, just during lunch breaks like over the last couple of weeks so it would have been impossible to film uh, the other thing is is I've never actually done like a full recap um, of any device let alone a CRT and I've got to be honest I don't actually like working on CRTs at the best of times um, there's just lots of high voltage and I'm always just really nervous about it so I thought that's a job to do off camera and basically just tell you by the way, the monitor's been recapped in the meantime. So the last real issue now is the hard drive. Now I know that the SCSI hard drive that's in it is dead. Uh, and a bit like other projects that I've done, I thought to myself, now do I go find an original SCSI hard drive, plug that in and get up and running? Um, and I just thought, no, well, that's just another time bomb. Uh, so I ordered a SCSI to SD card, uh, which is a, a board SCSI in one side, SD card in the other. Um, and um, so let's just take a look at that. So this will be our hard drive. This is the original frame off the SCSI hard drive that was originally in the machine. Um, I've simply got rid of the, the hard drive, but that's the frame uh, for that. Uh, I have a poorly printed 3D frame for the SCSI to SD card. Uh, I'll put a link to the design down in the, in the, uh, in the description. Um, basically my 3D printer died part way through, um, but it kind of finished it and it's going to be inside the machine anyway. Uh, and this is the SCSI 2 SD card. You can buy these online. Uh, they're fairly readily available. Um, I actually managed to get this one locally here in Australia. Um, so that's that. And finally an 8 gig SD card. Uh, and I'm not going to go through how all the rigmarole I went for setting this up uh, however I will put um, a link in the description uh, off with the how-to that I followed uh, to get this working so let's put this together And there we go so that's that now we take our mac lc uh, this should just clip back in from whence it came like that we plug in scuzzy cable uh, i've already made up an adapter pa uh, power cable from the original plug that goes into the motherboard to a floppy drive power cable um, and plug that in there and we're ready to rock and roll so as you can see we have a fully operational Mac LC and I'm kind of happy with that um, 
there's still though a lot of work to happen on this uh, and that will happen in part two of this uh, this rescue series um, as you can probably hear the fan in it still needs some work um, the whole thing is absolutely filthy so it's going to get a good bath and probably a retro bright um, although the monitor isn't too horrible but the actual computer and the keyboard and the mouse are just disgusting um, and then I'll probably do a bit of future proofing and I'll try and do this on camera this time in regards to replacing the capacitors that are known to fail on the main board. Um, and that will all happen in part two. So thank you for watching this part and I'll see you next time. So a quick epilogue before I finish up this video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Jeremy from JB Retro, uh, it's a blog online, uh, for his assistance information on getting this monitor recapped, uh, and also his encouragement for to just simply give it a go, it was already dead, so what am I going to do, kill it, make it worse? So, thank you Jeremy.